Morgan Stanley's out with a new note today and calling Amazon an underappreciated Gen I Gen AI winner, citing its investments in automating $200 billion in logistics costs. Those dollars could have a major impact for Amazon's core e-commerce business. Our Kate Rooney's here with more for today's Tech Check. They have been active this week, Kate. Yeah, Carl, some news this week, but from the beginning of the big tech AI race, if you think about it, Amazon CEO Andy Jassy has really argued that this technology is going to help their business internally. He said at certain points they're not just competing here because it's cool and because it's the newest buzzword. We are seeing some more proof of that strategy as AI now emerges as a way to keep costs down within uh, Amazon's giant e-commerce business. So in part, they're using robots in Silicon Valley. This is often known as physical AI. And then they're also streamlining that supply chain. Amazon does need this more than ever right now with the threat of tariffs and higher prices. The trade war has weighed on shares, negative on the year, really lingering in the middle of the MAG-7 lately. This week, Amazon rolled out some incremental AI updates. One new model was meant to speed up delivery. Another is to upgrade its fleet of robots, which in turn helps automate warehouses and keep costs down. So the key here for investors is margins. Right now, Amazon's business has roughly 11% operating margins for e-commerce. It's about half of that, but had gone negative if you think back to COVID, and those margins have since recovered. Gene Munster, for example, over Deepwater, thinks Amazon could get to 15 percent operating margins if all of these AI efforts end up paying off, especially in robotics. He can't compare it really to Tesla's strategy. Munster thinks a bulk of the value right now in AI for Amazon is in fulfillment center robots. I did speak to Amazon's robotics chief technologist who described these AI updates as a way to improve the brains of these machines. We call it physical AI because what we're doing is we're putting, we're, we're blending the mind with the body. We can create a more adaptive uh, robot. Uh, we can take, the, take on the menial, the mundane, and the repetitive, eliminate that with our robotics. We can improve efficiencies for our customer to pass along a low cost as well. This could go even further. There was a report from the information this week that Amazon is now testing humanoid robots for delivery. Right now, Amazon has almost a million of these machines out there in warehouses. I would say the vast majority, though, are not humanoid robots. They're sort of these robotics arms you can see on the screen there, for example, or they sort of look like giant Roombas on these factory floors. If robots and AI and supply chain can meaningfully keep costs down, investors are going to be more willing to support about $100 billion in CapEx that Amazon has been shelling out right now, guys. We're just going to throw another number in, which was 1.56 million people. That's how many Amazon yeah. employees globally. I mean, we've been talking about the job threat or job change, yeah. as Jim Breyer just said, to AI. When you're talking about productivity and more robots, I assume you're talking about cost savings on, on jobs and potentially on hiring. Yeah, it's a great question, Sarah. That's something we continuously ask them. And, and the immediate answer is typically, oh, it's actually in the near term going to result in more jobs. I know Jim Breyer said, oh, different jobs. And that is sort of the sentiment here. But you have to, you know, if you're connecting the dots here, if it's more robots, especially humanoid robots, you would think the end result is fewer people. But with the job numbers out today, you know, there's been arguments over not having enough people to work in some of these warehouses. But overall, you know, Amazon hasn't said this. They've said, yeah, we're going to keep jobs stable. But, you know, that is one way that you could theoretically cut costs and, and keep costs down. Yeah, the other wrinkle is that uh, some of the reporting about their uh, their push on robotics this week suggests that they're testing a lot of Chinese-made robots, which adds a whole other level of complexity. Right, Unitree. So it's sort of this smaller robot, but I was surprised to read that as well, Carl, that they have this partnership with Agility. Uh, the, the CEO of Agility Robotics, which is one of their partners, was on stage yesterday at a tech conference saying, actually, no, we're not, partner we're not doing this delivery part. They're really focused on the fulfillment centers. But that would be, I would say, an odd partnership um, if yep. you look at it on its face. But they've got, you know, as I said, almost a million of these robots out there. They've got a ton of different variations of it. Humanoids, are, they're kind of the exciting sci-fi version of these, but it's such a small portion of what the actual robotics picture looks right. like. For now. <laughs> Kate For now. Rudy. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Kate, thanks.